All right, and we are live again, maybe, even though the counter is not moving at all. Oh, there we go. It's just a little bit of lag. So, hello, everybody. Fine8-1393 here, and we are going to be doing Patriot in the Dark's Challenge again because I actually watched a couple videos, and I noticed that I was very lacking in description of being descriptive of this. So, I'm going to try this again. Uh, please excuse any noise you hear in the background. I have a dehumidifier going in since it is winter here in the great north. My furnace will kick in every once in a while. Also, I can't figure out how to get my headset to pick up audio, so we're going off the webcam here. So, first things first, I do not need my glasses, so we'll take those off. We'll pull down again on my wonderful uh, blindfold here. Let me find the webcam. Hi. I know I look very dorky, more so than usual, so. What we have here on the table is a Dan Wesson Model 15 357 Magnum revolver. It is a um, just a standard kind of medium frame, same size as like a GP100, maybe a little bit thinner, or a, I forget what Smith & Wesson's uh, um, letter designation for all of their frames are, so um, enough of that, so. Right now we've got on here these small, they're not really boot grips, they're more of a compact grip. They follow the um, lines of the back strap, the back part of the revolver that fits in like the palm of your hand. They actually kind of curl down a little bit at the bottom. The size, you get a little bit of a palm swell, tapers to the bottom. They're rounded at the top where they uh, actually slide in. There's room for your finger behind the trigger guard on these uh, wood grips. Um, before I get too ahead of myself, let's uh, check to make sure it's unloaded. Now the uh, Dan Wessons have a kind of a different uh, release mechanism. It's up here on the cylinder crane. It's in front of the cylinder. You pull down and pop that out. And one, and we got six empty chambers, and these are recessed chambers, meaning the head or the on the back of like a 38 special or a 357 Magnum. There's a little kind of a flange that sticks out from the main case body, and what recessed uh, a recessed cylinder does is basically the cylinder um, covers up that rim. Uh, it's something that they used to do. It's not something they do anymore because it's a it's it's basically a time saver. It's easier just to have a lathe, um, kind of just turn off all this and have it to like counterbore everything to get the rims to fit. So um, push the ejector out. And that's at the front of the cylinder, kind of center. It's actually what the cylinder rotates on, and then close that up. Now. From the gun here, it's a little two-inch snubby barrel that I've got on this. It has just a regular black ramp sight with a little, uh, I forget whether this is a red or a white uh, plastic insert that's like dovetailed into it. The sights are held on by a very tiny set screw that's held. It's in the 12 o'clock position above the barrel. Oh, yeah. Looking... And it's just a little pointed set screw that hooks into a, um, you know, like a reverse dovetail that holds the sight in. And then the, on the other side of the, that little sight dovetail, there's just a small cross pin. Now, Dan Wesson's originally made by, it was like either the great-grandson or the great-great-grandson of one of the founders of Smith & Wesson. And the neat little trick about these is you can... Uh, take the barrels off and exchange them. So right here, this is just a two inch um, vented ribbed barrel. The Dan Wessons came in like lightweight barrels, heavy ribbed and every combination thereof. So set that aside. Let's see, that's a little barrel nut. I will not be needing, oh wait, that might be the black one that I need. So I'll just set that over here by my gun, your uh, gun sights patch. Okay, and I did not check to see if I had my... Nope, there it is. We're going to need this little uh, feeler gauge. It's just a six thousandths of an inch thick piece of spring steel. And we use that for setting the uh, cylinder gap. 
Now we're going to need a specialized tool for this. This is a Dan Wesson, uh, basically multi-tool. Um, it's comprised of a hexagonal piece of steel that is going through at a through perpendicular to a barrel nut wrench, which has two little. It's basically a cylinder with a with the T handles kind of sticking through the sides. And on one end of the T handle, this longer end, because there's a long end and a short end, it ha it turn tapers down slightly to a smaller um, Allen key. And that's for actually taking the side plate, which is on the uh, left-hand side if you're holding the gun and pointing it. That's for taking off the side plate and getting into all the internals. Don't get your hopes up. I'm not taking the side plate off in the blind challenge. It's I haven't even taken the side plate off. Um, I've seen videos of it, and there's a couple of really small finicky parts. So, And on the short end, we have just the regular full diameter um, hex wrench, and that's actually for taking the grips off. If you turn the gun so the sights are down and feel along the bottom of the grip, any uh, any of the grips, whether it's this one or the big target grip that I'm going to be putting on with the bull barrel, the grips are held on by a socket head cap screw that go down through the center of the grip, and in the grip frame, it's actually a square tendon that goes down, and it's got a threaded boss in the very bottom of it. So, all right, getting back to the uh, wonderful multi-tool here. Now, on the cylinder part of the multi-tool, we have these two little teeth that stick down, and they engage into the barrel nut, which is kind of like an AR-15 castle nut, only much smaller and made of steel and not cheap aluminum. And the barrel, barrel wrench part of the multi-tool has a little bushing or a little barrel guide that goes down in the barrel to keep everything centered. And then at the very tip sticking out of the center of the barrel guide is a very small, very sharp um, Allen key, that's for taking the little set screw out of the front of the barrel to change out your sights. So, all right, I've already checked to make sure the gun's unloaded. I'm first, what I want to do is kind of hold the or basically just stick the barrel, the uh, multi tool in the barrel. It's kind of self lining, and uh, let's see that little click right there is the two teeth engaging the two little cutouts on the barrel nut and I'm going to have to turn this to get better leverage. There we go. You just break it loose and just start spinning the nut off and what I like to do is get it about halfway out, take the multi-tool out and unthread the barrel nut. Now the barrel nut itself is threaded on the inside to uh, go on to the actual barrel. It's, um, oh, I'd say maybe about quarter inch or so thick front to back. And then like the wall thickness, mm, maybe like quarter inch, 200,000, something like that. But let's see, this one has one, two cutouts. This is an original one that came with the gun. Um, aftermarket ones, like the ones that come from as it, e, EWK Arms, that's the same place that I got this bull barrel from that we're going to be putting on, have uh, four slots in it. So I'm just going to set that, excuse me, my neck's creeping up on me. I'm going to set that aside. Now the barrel shroud, which most people would think would be the actual barrel, but it's basically just a big hunk of steel that has your front sight, your... Um, your ejector rod shroud, and that slips over the regular barrel. This isn't really a pressure taking surface. It basically has a little, well, actually, a fairly deep counter bore that the barrel nut, if I can remember where I set stuff, this is, yep, the original, 
sits into, it locates, and that little shelf actually puts some um, tension on the barrel. It's um, kind of pulling the barrel apart while, or front to back, it's pulling it apart while compressing the barrel shroud, giving it, um, giving the Dan Wesson uh, some rigidity to it. Now the uh, barrel itself is basically just a it's just a tube. It's a threaded tube. It's got threads on the front or on the muzzle end of the gun. And then it's got threads on the back where the forcing cone and everything are. Now the, excuse me, I had to work out a burp there. The threads are of different length. They're the same actual threads. I can take the barrel nut off the front of this gun and screw it onto the back forcing cone area, but how you tell the front from the back is this feel up front there, the threads are fairly short. They're like maybe a half inch or so, whereas the threads on the back that actually thread into the frame above the, uh, above your ejector rod. Um, hold on while I keep on screwing this, and these are regular threads, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, I'd say that's maybe like an inch and a quarter or so of threads. So I'm going to take my barrel nut here, and I'm just going to screw it on to the barrel that I've taken out, and I'm going to put it back into the front end, and you should be able to tell which end is the front because it'll have a large, larger counterbore, and you can actually feel the front side. So I'm just going to Set that in there and set that whole assembly aside for safekeeping. Um, let's see here. Okay, there's my grip. I'm going to push that aside to the map. Now, this super heavy barrel that I have, I'm just going to take the uh, barrel out of the barrel shroud and I'm going to loosen or take off this um, nut. And yes, it is a stainless nut. And no, I'm not... Uh, I haven't taken my blindfold off yet. See, still wearing it. I know it's stainless because I have a compensator that goes on this that's stainless. So, anyway. Now, this bull barrel, it uses the same basic tube. All barrel tubes are of the same um, basic dimensions. The only difference is the length. This is a six-inch barrel. And this bull barrel... Um, yeah, it's, I'd say, about an inch or so thick, um, left to right. Top to bottom, maybe about two inches or so. It's rounded on the top. Um, pretty much if you were to take the top and bottom, uh, not rounds, uh, they're not chamfers. Anyway, if you were to take the rounds off the top and the bottom, they'd make a circle. So, yeah, it's pretty much just a big bar that's been rounded off. The front end is squared off. It does have a nice chamfer around the outside edge. But pretty much this is just to add weight. And it's a really uh, sweet shooting gun with that on there. So, first thing you're going to want to do then is move the barrel shroud out of the way. I'm going to feel for which, okay, this is the long threads. So I'm just going to get that lined up with the threaded hole. If you hold the gun like normal, there should be a threaded hole on top in line with the top of the cylinder. And oh, I think I forgot to mention this particular one has, or this particular Dan Wesson has adjustable rear sights that someone's rounded all the corners off of. Now I'm just going to get that... Um, barrel started here. I don't want to screw it in all the way because if I can remember where I put my feeler gauge. Of course, I piled it, put everything in a pile so it's in the bottom. Now, this feeler gauge is, it's got a wider end and it's got a skinnier end. The wider end is going to be squared off with little rounds on each corner. The skinnier ends are just going to have a radius. Radius, that's the word I was looking for. 
at the bottom. You want to stick the radius end in between the front of the cylinder or just right in front of the cylinder where the barrel would come in because this is what we're going to use to set our barrel gap. So we're just going to keep screwing this barrel into the top of the frame. Yes, I do have the right one in there or in the right way around. And this feeler gauge is cut to where it fits between the top strap or the, the bottom of the top strap, which is basically the very top of the, of the revolver frame and the uh, cylinder uh, hub. I forget what the actual name of it is. So we want to set this to where it has just enough resistance on it to where this, I can pull this halfway out and it's not going to just slide down. I don't want to screw it on there tight because when we screw the barrel on or the barrel nut on, it will actually tighten the barrel down a bit. So I'm going to take my bowl barrel here and okay, I forgot to mention, so I just feel, felt it on it, felted it. That's a nice word. Um, the rear of the bull barrel has these little chamfers on it that go down to roughly the same thick to make the bull barrel roughly the same thickness as the frame on the revolver. It's just kind of a nice little, uh, I guess they call it like a beauty line or something like that. So I'm going to line up the bull barrel with the hole or with the barrel itself. Now this is actually an aftermarket one, so it's a little bit, everything's a little bit tighter than, okay, I already tightened that down a little too much. Now for lining up and making sure everything is clocked correctly, there is a small roll pin. That would be, uh, let's see, six, about the eight o'clock position. If you're looking down the barrel, it's at the eight o'clock position of the ejector rod. So all we have to do is just slide this on here and then there's a little um, drilled hole in the barrel that'll hold it on. So, all right, or of the barrel shroud, sorry. So where did I put that? No, nope, that's a cap and cap. Put all this stuff in a pile. So, all right, now with the barrel nut, what you want to do is there's a smooth side, and then there's a side that have the little teeth cut out. You want to have it, the smooth side go in to the counterbore. You want to have the teeth sticking out. And all you have to do is just get them... I remember why I did this the other way around. Okay. Just keep the barrel shroud held on, barrel shroud held on there. And we're just going to screw the barrel nut on. And basically what I do is just um, find one of the cutouts and just kind of like, um, uh, this might uh, make me sound like an old or a weird guy. Think of like a steam like a steam locomotive. And for those of you who are too young to know what that is, shame on you. Um, and just basically kind of go around and around on that. So once I get it finger tight, what I'll do is, okay, there's still a little bit of play in the barrel, but I'll stick the barrel nut wrench back in. It'll kind of, you'll feel it click when it goes in. And then this tight, just snug it down fairly tight. You don't want to horse, horse on it because these um, cutouts and this wrench, they can get rounded and worn off. And the last thing you want to do is get the barrel nut stuck on there. Or try to find one of these. You can get replacements of the uh, multi-tools. But, um, you know, if you have any original one, they're pretty good. Now, what I want to do, oops, just bump my microphone. What we want to do is take the feeler gauge out and just kind of, it shouldn't drop through. There should be a little bit of resistance um, because the back of the barrel has come out into the, uh, um, I guess you'd call it the cylinder cutout on a revolver. And, yeah, does be a little bit of resistance. Now there's one last thing I need to do. I'm going to turn the revolver on its head. I'm going to take the short end 
of the tool. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the um, little protective safety cap back on the barrel nut part of the multi-tool because that little um, that little Allen key for taking the sights out is quite sharp. So I'm just going to put the grip Allen key into the grip screw on the bottom of the revolver. I'm going to screw it out. Once again, standard screws, lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'm just going to pull this off and there's just this little square stud. Uh, for me, it's about three fingers or so long. There's a little threaded boss on there. Now, when you're putting your grips on some, um, the little on some grips, the little socket head cap screw will can fall out. So, just put that. So, just uh, you know, keep keep them turned the right way. And I'm going to find the bottom of the hole. Now, this um, target grip, it's a much bigger grip. It's still it kind of arches out a bit more towards the back. It flares out a bit more all the way around the bottom. There's, you can't uh, touch the frame behind the trigger guard on this or with this grip installed. It's got some nice checkering, a little thumb cut out on the top, uh, Dan Wesson medallions on either side. And um, there we go. Now, what I want to do is once again, we'll check it to make sure that uh, the ammo fairy hasn't left me anything. We're going to close it up. I'm going to cock the hammer. And I'm just going to ease it forward. And this is basically to make sure that we don't have any binding. Because it is possible to get your barrel nut a little too tight. So, okay, I say we're good. Um, thank you, everyone, for... Um, hold on, let me see if I can get me roughly in there so probably not but thank you everyone for watching please go over and check out uh, patriot in the dark's uh, blind challenge and all the other videos that everyone else in the uh, two-way community has uh, put out for them or for him uh, check out guntube.org check out gunstreamer check out gunchannels.com one of the best uh, pro two-way uh, social media sites on the internet and uh I will see you guys later. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab my glasses so I can see what I'm doing here.